first here now reaction to today's indictment, Vivek Ramaswamy, 2024 GOP presidential candidate. Vivek, uh, your view of this, 45 pages, speedy trial necessary, and it looks like uh, the presidential race for Biden is being run out of the DOJ. That's exactly right, Laura. Now, I have said this before in each of the other two indictments. I'll say it again. This sets an awful precedent in our country. They're going full banana republic, full third world on this. I think that sets a dangerous precedent. Now, on this specific indictment, Laura, I think there are a couple of really concerning facts. First, they're using an unprecedented legal theory. Alvarez was a case in 2012, still good law, that holds that public officials and candidates for elected office can make false statements, period. So he's by definition using an unprecedented legal theory here. I think the more dangerous part of this is, Laura, it doesn't even relate to Trump. It relates to the legal system. By criminalizing the behavior of four co-conspirators, lawyers who were giving good faith legal advice to Trump, the job of a lawyer is to actually provide legal advice. Trump was seeking legal advice. And I think this indictment then pushes the boundary even further on just legal grounds. And a general rule of thumb is if you're going to try to indict a political opponent and a former president in the middle of an election, it better darn well not be based on an unprecedented, untested, yeah. flimsy legal theory. That's exactly what we have here, which is dangerous. Yeah, the novel application of the law. That's a that's great timing to put that into play. Now, Vivek, I mentioned this briefly earlier, but this judge, Amy Chutkin, who's handling this case, uh, back in 2022, the AP called her the toughest punisher in the January 6 cases. Uh, she's a former assistant public defender nominated uh, by Obama, and she's consistently taken the hardest line against the defendants of January 6 of any judge serving on Washington's federal trial court. Um, she worked for Boy Schiller, which, of course, is Hunter Biden's firm of choice, to uh, where he was getting a lot of his uh, money from these foreign en entities run through, uh, the same law firm that represented Alexander Vindman, I believe uh, Samantha Powers, uh, others, uh, the connection to Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, this is quite the, uh, quite the connection that we're drawing here. But uh, does any of this surprise you? It doesn't. It also goes to show why this choice of jurisdiction and venue matters deeply. And I think Jack Smith knows exactly what he's doing. Laura, it just strikes me as the truth of the matter here. They are not going to stop until they get him going or get him coming. And I say this as somebody who is running against Trump. I'm polling at third in the Republican primary now. It would be easier for me if Donald Trump were eliminated from competition. That is not how any of us should want to win, because that is bad for this country. That is why I think it's important for those of us competing against Trump to take a strong stand against these politicized indictments. It's also why, Laura, I'm happy to share this right now, is Earlier this evening, I actually filed suit against the DOJ following up on my earlier FOIA request, trying to get to the bottom of what Biden and Merrick Garland told Jack Smith. That is transparency the public really deserves here. I do not believe that this special veil of a special prosecutor is really as separate as they're making it out to be. I filed a FOIA request in relation to the last case, which, contrary to law, they Rebuff did not respond in substance. Oh, no, so we filed that sense. lawsuit today and we're filing a new FOIA request. But either way, Laura, we have to get to the bottom, the truth of the matter here. And well, the answer Vivek, is this is a politicized persecution. Yeah, Vivek, uh, I don't think the American people are going to know the truth unless there's a change in leadership. I mean, Republicans are, are mm -hmm. staking the future on these investigations and we're learning a lot, which is fantastic. That's right. But you got to beat them at the polls. And that means early voting, ballot harvesting, a 50 state campaign, getting um, more minority voters, that multi-ethnic coalition that you've talked about. That's where it's at. That's how you drain the swamp. The investigations, I, everyone knows Biden's a crook now and they apparently don't care. A lot of people exactly. don't care. And that's why this has to be a landslide, 1980 Reagan style landslide, Laura. That's why I'm in this race. We're going to have to bring young people along with us. That will make the difference between a razor thin election and a landslide moral mandate. And if I am elected, you have my pledge, Laura, that we will open this kimono up, roll that log over, <laughs> see what crawls out. 
from the Jeffrey Epstein client list to what's happened in these cases. We, the public, can handle the truth. It's not like you can't handle the truth. No, we can handle the truth. Vivek, There's no such know, thing as a noble lie. The public deserves to know. Yeah, we were going to actually have you on originally to talk about why young people, especially young men um, in high school, young, uh, young boys in high school are becoming uh, perhaps more conservative. And I, I think mm -hmm. not just the cancel culture and all the you know, anti-masculinity stuff that's going on, but I think just this basic sense of fairness. That people are, are, yes. are recoiling from. It's, it's just not fair and it's, and it's pragmatic. Speak to that as it relates to this breaking news tonight. I think there is part of our human nature, Laura, that demands the truth. We as human beings, the thing that make us different from animals is that we relate to one another based on actually telling the truth to each other. We now live in a moment where the government repeatedly hides from us the truth about, be it the origin of COVID-19, be it the Hunter Biden laptop story and the truth of that matter, the truth about what happened on January 6th, and now the truth about what's really behind these politicized indictments. I think we, the people, are at a place where we just want the government to tell us the truth. Tomorrow, Laura, I'm actually going to Nashville, speaking of young people, calling, this is pre-scheduled, to call on them to release that manifesto of the oh, transgender shooter. For that. Yeah, we've been asking They're for that. They're hiding it. And, but all yeah. of these things are deeply related, Laura, to a government that does not trust its people with the truth. Yeah. That's what we're going to well, change. And, and if I'm running and in charge, that's exactly what we're going to deliver. Yep. Yeah. Sun, sunshine, as always, the best disinfectant. Thank you, Vivek. Great to see you tonight. Now back now to our legal team.